Hi, welcome to this video in which I read some romances that are fresh out of the hopper. What is the hopper, you may ask? I have been calling everything the hopper. <laughs> the dishwasher, you put the dishes in the hopper. When you take your laundry out, you take it right out of the hopper. And when books come out, they are fresh off the press, right out of the hopper. All right, what are we gonna be reading for this video? We have a couple March first releases. One of these is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I read the first book in this series. It happened one summer, actually pretty recently. So like I remember the characters and I remember what's going on and I've never disliked a book from Tessa Bailey in my entire life. So hope, high hopes. Next up, I have A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. I'm not really interested in a dentist romance. I know <laughs> that's probably mean, but I just am not into it. That being said, apparently it's fast paced and slow burn, which uh, interests me. Hopefully I'll like it more than like office place romances. And then lastly, I'm reading A Night on the Island by Josie Silver. This book is not as fresh out of the hopper, but I know a lot of people really liked One Day in December, but I feel like I don't want to read like a snowy situation romance right now. So I will start with this. I'm gonna go get the Josie Silver book and start reading. Okay, so I am 132 pages into this book and I do not like it at all. Our main character is named Cleo. She is a dating columnist but she is single and she's about to turn 30 so she's like doing a little getaway you know adding a little new perspective to her dating column while she's busy not dating and then Mark is a guy who has some kids who he loves very dearly but he needs some alone time so he also wants to go to this island and they kind of there's there's a little bit of a mix-up and they end up in the same cottage and they have to share to reiterate I do not like this book and I I guess I can kind of get like it's a little sad like the heartstrings are pulled a little bit my heartstrings are pulled a little bit this book is given me just about nothing like I'm not gonna get the wording on this but there was like just stupid things that happened like Cleo walked into the cottage and called it like an all-in-one dealio where like the bedroom is the same room as the kitchen just say like it's it's a studio I don't know use a different word use a real word like she's she's not that quirky she's just 30 single and a dating columnist whatever and then they had to take like two boats to get to this island but like I can't even imagine like what like what this island is and there's like one weekly ferry and like just things that are like I'm not I'm not trying to make it realistic but like the characters are human enough I guess that you think like I don't know something make me feel feel a little more like immersed in this novel but I'm just sitting on the sidelines while characters are just spitting facts out about themselves. I feel like the characters do a lot of assuming about each other again maybe that's that's incorrect and I'm just like sensitive to that. I don't know, it's pretty boring. It took me so long to get through 132 pages. Um, It's like, I like a good enemies to lovers. I like a good, you know, have to stay in the same space. Can't think of the name of the trope right now. Forced confinement, but like the romance version. I think every part of that was done poorly. The banter was not cute. I don't think the chemistry is cute. I understand that it's not like steamy steamy by 132 pages. And uh, like, in fact, they just had a little kiss moment and then like pulled away from each other. Maybe, maybe not just recently, you know? I'm just bored. I'm gonna talk some shit really quickly. So if you don't agree with me, just recognize that like, I guess I'm a little frustrated. I used to read a lot of books from Reese Witherspoon's book club. I just wanted to like read books with other people. I wanted to talk with other people about books and that was kind of my way of doing it before this booktube channel. Um, I do not like a lot of her picks. And on the back of this, uh, Reese Witherspoon said it absolutely charmed me. And she said that about one day in December, this author's other book, but just like the fact that Reese Witherspoon was on it, I was like, oh no, am I, am I gonna be, am I gonna be a little bored? Or am I, or am I gonna feel like I just need more? Okay, that was my shit talking part. That wasn't, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I just don't wanna read this book and I'm going to read this book. You know why I'm finishing it? I'm finishing it because it's a romance and I'm not in pain and I don't like, like, I'm okay seeing where it goes, I guess. A lot of the books I've been DNFing recently, I like just have stopped caring in the middle. Um, I haven't stopped caring, so that's cool. 
All right, I've literally lost this book and I'm okay with it. I'm sure that the reason I lost it is because I read it what feels like a really long time ago to the point where I'm not sure like I remember all the reasons I really didn't like it. Like one of them was definitely like the dialogue and then also it just, it was so boring. The characters, like I was not interested in the characters and I didn't give a fuck about them. Maybe that's my issue. Like I feel like the writing was fine and all that. Actually, you know what? I don't think I like the writing so much. I feel like I talked about in my first update, that was sort of what feels like so long ago, something about heartstrings being pulled. And I will say I completely didn't, didn't get it at all. I think the book got worse for me personally before it got better, but by the end I was like, okay, I could see why someone would cry at this. I don't think the events at the end, which made me enjoy the book more, made it worth reading for me, but I know a ton, a ton of people love this book. And I'm wondering if it's one of those things that like I will get when I love my kids so much that I need a vacation from them. <laughs> Look, I understand the need to like get away from your kids and your life and stuff, but like if you miss them all so much, then just, go back, whatever. I'm, I'm getting over it. I just feel like I could yell at these characters and tell them how to act and they would like do better. That sounds so bad. Why am I so mean in this? I don't know. I had so many thoughts at the time, but I think the main one that's sticking with me is it got worse before it got better. And I tried a Josie Silver book. I have no need to try another one. Next up, I'm going to pick up A Brush With Love. I am still not a thousand percent sure if I'm going to like, like, the setting enough. And I feel like that's unfair for me to read a book that like, I'm not sure I'll entirely like, but also like the last book I read set in a college was The Love Hypothesis, which like I absolutely loved. All right, I'm gonna get on this. Well, I guess we're back to wearing the same thing for a full ass video. Okay, A Brush With Love. What is it about? This book is about Harper and Dan. They are both 26. They're in dentistry schools at different levels, years, you know. Harper is really interested in like reconstructive surgery. And so she has to study a lot, get good grades. And she like, it's a big passion for her. So she's excited, like she's a hard worker. Dan is more a family legacy at the school. He started going to dentistry school cause he kind of felt like he had to, to keep his mom who owns a private practice on track. There's a whole family dynamic there, but basically he's not too good at dentistry school. And their romance starts when they literally like crash into each other, fall all over the ground. And then they're getting to know each other more by like working on projects and like going out with friends sometimes. Like it's, it's cute. It's fun. It's medium. Okay. At the beginning, I was like, this is way too much dentist shit for me. Like <laughs> no fucking way. And then it got pretty insta-lovey. In fact, really, really fucking insta-lovey to the point where like, don't, don't fact check this. It might be one of the <laughs> most insta-lovey books I have ever read. Maybe not including like straight up smut, but also maybe including straight up smut. I thought it was annoying with it being such like a slow burn romance or like supposedly slow burn romance. They're in love at the beginning or like love at first sight type of lover, like really attracted to each other, whatever. Then it doesn't really go up slowly from there, it just kind of stays the same. I mean, it like slopes up a little bit as they get closer, like together and stuff like that. But they're just so into each other from the beginning and hang out so much from the beginning. Okay, yeah. And then, and then a couple other things. Harper has really bad anxiety. I like the representation. I think it's really cool, even though the anxiety is kind of just like, thrown in there for like conflict within herself. Like it's interesting the ways that she pushes through it or like one can see her taking a deep breath and dealing with it. And like she does or doesn't like situations or like when she gets uncomfortable, like, seeing inside of her brain, it kind of feels like it's just in there to cause conflict, but I think it adds a lot and it makes it like so cool. Like when she just stands in there and she's like, no, like I'm a dentist. Like she just knows her shit. Like when people are being sexist or don't believe in her, like she just fucking stands up for what she thinks is right. Sorry, I'm all over the place, <laughs> but it's because my thoughts aren't like very linear on this. I think like they've, it's been a very consistent book. I don't think there are that many parts that I like, like so much more than the other parts, I guess. I don't think the characters are that interesting. I just talked about the anxiety and how that's kind of interesting. The concept is interesting and I think how it's 
done is an interesting idea, but I think the characters themselves, like they're they're fun to read about. If these characters were like in Game of Thrones type TV show and they got killed off, like I'd be fine with it, you know? I love the friends, the roommates a lot more in this story, I think, than the main characters. And it's interesting when that like keeps me reading, keeps me going. Not that I by any means am close to DNFing this book. It's not as workaholic-y as I thought it was gonna be. I feel like a lot of these kind of, like she does study all the time, like her, she's really career oriented, goal oriented, but I think there's more going on. But I think that Macy Eddings is doing a really good job of not making it like annoying, which I appreciate. There's nothing in it that I'm like, ah, oh, that needs to like stop. Yeah, I guess just where I'm at is like, it's not like, I'm not intrigued. I'm not compulsively reading, but like, I like it. It's, it's chillin'. They're, they're cute together. <laughs> and I don't hate dentistry as much as I thought I would. Okay, so I finished this book pretty quickly compared to how my reading has been going with all the other books. I don't know if I've just had more time these past two days or this was fast paced and I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of thoughts in my last update and I think it's because I didn't just do it at 100 pages. I did a little bit further on. I think I have some things I can add. It was also pretty incoherent and jumbled up. So I'm gonna try to keep it together this time. I'll start off with the romance aspect. This is a slow burn romance, but it's not really slow burn because they keep having moments that are like so intimate that I'm not just like, just fuck already. Like they're close enough. <laughs> and I don't really care about them getting together because I'm just here for the sex scenes as we know. So I'm sure that that's like a personal thing. and. I'm I'm not calling it not a slow burn romance. But at the same time, it didn't feel that way to me and it felt uh, pretty freaking hot the whole time. The insta love still got me. Like I know I talked about that before and it didn't really end up being an issue for me as far as like the whole ass storyline goes. But when I think about it, I'm like, why you? <laughs> why does this happen so quick? I don't know, give me a little more about the characters, but I say that and it's really interesting in the end of the book, I feel like we get a lot more of the characters or not of the characters, like on the characters, about the characters. I don't think this is a spoiler. The mental illness aspect, mostly anxiety and trauma really, really comes into play. I think most of us know at this point that I am super into therapy and pretty mentally ill. So I think I appreciated a book just preaching on that. And I don't necessarily or often appreciate books that are like pretty preachy. I guess this wasn't preachy in like the vibes, but it definitely went on and on <laughs> about how much uh, people need therapy and people need therapy for different reasons. And I was not mad at it. I did get a little mad at the dentistry stuff, but like it's to be expected. Like, look at this cover. It's literally toothpaste. Like the back is all about blood gore and extra long roots. Like I, I should have expected it, but like every single time canines came up, I was like, ah, I'll like, <laughs> it's fine. I just don't care to read about it. Like it's not, it's not sexy. Like the love hypothesis was. I think that was only halfway sarcastic. I don't know. I I don't I don't think dentistry is that hot and I didn't really care about it, but I still feel like it was imp like implemented well. I think that this is a really well done book. It's not my favorite I've read recently, but there's not anything like inherently wrong with it. I think just like the subject matter and the tropes were not so much my thing and I think it was a lot less escapist because I really related to the main character in a lot of ways. It's making me kind of sad. I can't think of a book that was like a romance that I've read in a really long time where just like not loving it was like a feeling in my bones. I don't feel it in my teeth. Does anyone feel <laughs> dislike for a book in their teeth? Cool, sick, neat. Next up is Tessa Bailey's new book. I cannot believe I am reading a sequel or I am reading these in order or whatnot. I just really fucking liked it happened one summer. And I really fucking like Tessa Bailey. Um, if I don't like this book, I'm gonna be so fucking sad. So I went to LA where I basically finished Hook, Line, and Sinker and I almost finished on the plane too and I just now finished it up and I didn't want to like 
set up everything in LA, so uh, I didn't do a 100 page update. But here's what I would have said at 100 pages. I really like this book. It's one of Tessa Bailey's books. We all know that I really like Tessa Bailey books and I really like it. Our main character is Hannah. She is working on a movie and she gets to go back to like this small fishing town that she was in in the book prior. It happened one summer with her sister Piper who fell in love with Brennan and Brennan's, Brendan's maybe? friend is Fox or like works on the ship with Fox. So basically since the last book Hannah and Fox have been texting a lot and flirting a lot and it is a really slow burn romance. That's the gist of it. A lot of the conflict comes to Fox kind of like acting like a player even though he hasn't really been because he's really hung up on Hannah. And yeah a lot of mutual pining, a lot of like issues on like why they couldn't be together but my biggest thing is like y'all could just like get together and it'd be fine I guess. Uh, Hannah is staying in his guest room while she's there. I don't know it's definitely a whole like they're just friends situation and Fox does try and be her wingman and stuff like that. I know this is kind of out of order but it's because I've read this book in a lot of different settings so uh, the timeline is a little jumbled for me. I will say this book is so so predictable. It's a little less predictable on the will they won't they like in each scene but like before I even opened this book I knew exactly where it was going and how it was gonna get there. I can't really think of anything that pissed me off besides the writing. Some phrases would be repeated like especially in sex scenes like oh god oh god and I was just like uh, say it if you want to, think it if you want to, but I don't need it like in the narration. <laughs> and then also some of Fox's little dirty talking was um not that cute and I don't know if I just noticed that because Jack was sitting next to me as I was reading it and making fun of it but it definitely made me look closer at some of the dirty talk and be like uh I don't I don't know how hot that is. Again I've been known to be super non hyper critical about Tessa Bailey books so keep that in mind if you're thinking about picking this book up. All right that's kind of what I have to say about these. I think as far as final recommendations go, the Josie Silver book, which I have lost at this point, I have no idea where it's called, what's it called? A Day on the Island or something like that. I think that if you read romance, like I read romance and enjoy the types of romances I enjoy, you could do better. Although a ton of people absolutely love this book and I'm sure it's for a reason. Uh, it just definitely wasn't for me. A Brush of Love was excellent. Don't let the dentistry scare you away. Not gonna lie, I read this a while ago so I don't don't remember my exact recommendation but the short one is this is a good egg and a really good debut. And lastly Hook, Line, and Sinker. If you're a Tessa Bailey fan absolutely read it if you read everything she comes out with like don't don't miss it not that you would. I think in this series I enjoyed It Happened One Summer the first book in the series better so if you're one of those people who like skips around in companion novels like just just go with It Happened One Summer and if you really like Hannah or Fox go go with that. And there we go thanks so much for watching I know this is a repeat idea of videos I've done before but I just love reading romances and I find that I like a lot of the newer ones a lot. I think the tropes we've got going here the trends we've got going here the writing we've got going here is generally something I really really enjoy so I'm just having such a good time reading the new ones that come out. All right I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>